Good morning. My name is Dr. Swan Somsiri. I'm an, an orthodontist and I practice since 1980. At that time I was in Frankfurt University, Germany. And my teaching will be stressed on edgewise technique and the wire bending. Wire bending is the thing that we practice since over 100 years. And with the times goes by, I found that wire bending is a hard stuff. It is hard to find people who want to learn and even harder to find a teacher in wire bending. As times goes by, with the born of the straight wire appliance, the industrial tried to introduce the preform appliance. But anyhow, industrial cannot provide you everything. Many, many jobs, the orthodontist still have to do it by his own. For example, the final po tooth positioning, the space closing with a closing loop, which can determine the precise time of treatment. So we still have to bend wire till today. And I think now it's a good time to go back to the basic, the wire bending technique. Let me introduce you this wire bending exercise book, designed for 018 slot, the classical edgewise technique, as taught at the SOS Orthodontic Study Club. We can divide wire bending technique into three different parts. Number one, we will be dealing with first order bends. The second will be second order bend, and the third is the third order bend. The design of the first order band, composed of five different characteristics. The ideal arch concept has to be set first. This is the basic for first order band. It composed of A, the individual arch form. We found that the patient will have their own individual arch. Number two, or B, the individual arch size. So the arch form and arch size will be set first. For example, the mandibular arch, we use the intercanine width as the reference. This will not be changed throughout the treatment. Number two, we will talk about individual elements or each segment of the arch wire. It will be placed for anterior segment, the canine segment, the premolar segment, and the molar segment for non extraction therapy. Page number five will show maxillary arch wire and the mandibular arch wire. The element you see here today, we do not bend all of those things. We put a lot of bend in the bracket. The bracket I use is Alexander modified setup. Number three, point to concern is the symmetry of the right and the left side of the arch. We must have symmetry at the every level of the arches, as seen here. Number four, intermaxillary and mandibular relationship. Number five, the arch wire coordination. After the maxillary arch wire and the mandibular arch wire was bent, they will be put together to see the relationship. We call this arch wire coordination as seen on page number seven. Here is the maxillary arch wire and the dot line is the mandibular arch. And you can see that the important thing is the anterior part or the front segment or the anterior segment. It needs to be close to each other. This is called the kissing partner. And the posterior part may be different from il the illustration. The maxillary arch may be wider. The mandibular arch may be smaller as this will be seen in the mouth and based on individually. Now, before we get started with the first order band, we have to learn about the orientation. For example, when you see the arch wire on the table, you can say it immediately, which arch wire is that? Is the top one or the bottom one? The maxillary arch or the mandibular arch? So, let me get back to the arch wire. 
this is the arch wire ready for marking so you have to make the marking on the maxillary arch wire the first mark is the M the M is the midpoint or the middle of the arch wire 1A is the right hand side of the patient B is the left hand side of the patient and for maxillary arch wire we will mark on the frontal gingival side we call it frontal gingival marking we mark at 1A 2A 3A 4A 5A and 6A which means 1A is the distal contact point of the central incisor 2A is the distal contact point of the lateral incisor 3A is the distal contact point of the canine 4A is the distal contact point of the first premolar 5A is the distal contact point of the second molar and 6A is the distal contact point of the maxillary first molar I repeat it again A side is the right hand side of the patient B side is the left hand side of the patient this is the mandibular arch and you can see this is the occlusal side and this is frontal side when the arch wire lay down on the table you can see you can say it immediately this is mandibular arch because we put the marking on the frontal occlusal side this is the frontal and this is the occlusal the marking will start with the same procedure M is for the middle this is the middle of the arch wire when we mark at 1A 2A 3A 4A 5A and 6A I repeat the A side is the right hand side of the patient the B side is the left hand side of the patient so 1A means distal contact point of the central incisor 2A is the distal contact point of the lateral incisor and 3A is the distal contact point of the canine 4A is the distal contact point of the first bicuspid and 5A is the distal contact point of the second bicuspid 6A is distal contact point of the first molar and on the B side you will see the same this is 1B, 2B, 3B, 4B, 5B and 6B as I mentioned it earlier that we have to take care about the individual arch form arch form today has been described by many teachers and also described by many company so I do not use that one I will respect the patient's individual arch form the best thing is you have to have the study, mo mo study model of the patient and you put it on the Xerox machine or copy machine and then you cover the mole with a dark color towel and operate the copy machine so you get the picture of the occlusal surface of that patient and this is the reference to bend the first or the bend now I want to show you how to fabricate an ash wire this can be maxillary or bandibular ash wire fabricate this from a straight piece of stainless steel wire approximately 7 inches long divided the ash wire into 3 segments 2 long and 1 in the middle shot and then we use tweed ash wire bending plier and we grind the ash wire at the 2 thirds as shown here and then we use the left hand the index finger and the thumb to squeeze the ash wire and form a half circle and then you can see that the ash wire is now containing anterior segment if you cannot do this you can buy preform one now I will show the other side and you can see the anterior curvature and the posterior segment 
The next step, we will add outband and canine curvature. The next demonstration will be demonstrated how to make a preform SY or to make the anterior curvature using the SY former. As you can see here, the size of the SY will be labeled on top here. So we use the 016 SY and then we have to select the last groove. And you can see here five grooves cut into the SY former. And here again we have to divide the SY into three segments. Two long and one short in the middle. And then we started at the left hand side. And we use the left thumb, press the Y and fix it in the slot. And then we twist the right hand so the Y will be bent and we let the leg cross for a while and slowly turn it open. When we pull out the SY former, you have preformed SY with anterior curvature. If you don't want to do this, you can buy a preformed one now. So, you have two SY to demonstrate the top one and the bottom one. 